Hello, YouTube. I am back with... It's been over two months at this point. I think two and a half months since I've been using the Easy Root. So, these are the products right here. This is the Easy Root uh, Hair Growth Root Stimulator. Repairs the scalp and revitalizes hair follicles. This is two fluent ounces. I got this for... Let me see the price on here. One was $24.90. I... Oh, this was $19.99 and this was the $24.99. So this is the Easy Root uh, Shampoo, which nourishes, strengthens, thinning hair, prevents and stops dandruff, promotes hair growth and stops hair loss, cools and moisturizes the scalp. I can definitely attest to that part. Um, prevents and stops itching, treats alopecia. Mm. As far as male pattern baldness, we, we about to get into that in a moment. For all hair types of hair, men and women. And this is $24.94 for 8 fluid ounces. I use this mm, out of the past 2 months. I would say I've used it like 6 times or something like that. 6 or 8 times. Um, and I'm just down to here. So it does go quite a bit of a long way. So these are my befores when I started this around August and this is where I'm at now so I'm noticing some retention and a little bit of results on my existing hair that's not balding uh, I'm noticing you know improvement where I'm still having hair but not necessarily in the word my hair is very sparse and thin out, unfortunately. But like I said, I'm noticing some improvements. Unfortunately, my hair looks like it wants to remain stagnant. But at least it's no longer breaking out. And then it, this looks like it's increasing a little bit in thickness again. Yeah, this is definitely approved a little bit. But the length is staying overall the same. I don't know. It is growing a little bit because it was up to here. Now it's down to here. So that's two and a half months. So what you do is with this is I use this after my regular shampoo. Like I shampoo with the uh, Crema of Nature uh, softening and moisturizer replenishing shampoo. The clay gray one. I'm looking at it. That's why I'm looking over to the side. And then I go in with this. So to show y'all what it looks like. And then this is the one thing I don't like about it. Since it's so thick, at times it wants to come out the other end as well. So I got to be very careful with that. But let's see if it comes out correct today. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, okay. Sometimes it comes out very thick. Other times very liquidy. The day, uh, the day, ooh, okay, ooh. Today it wants to come out very liquidy. I'm just going to put this on my hair like so. Okay. Rub it into my hands. Put it onto my hair. Now this is not how I would normally do it. But I'm on my bed. Ugh. <laughs> Almost about to stain my sheets up and stuff. Thank goodness it's all natural products. And it doesn't stain quite. <laughs> it actually... Actually, I guess with the ingredients, it will actually get rid of some stains, honey. So you don't have... If you're doing this on the bed for tutorial purposes, you don't have to worry about this staining the bed. So I'm just putting this in my balding area for demonstration purposes. Now, on wash day, I actually use it all over. And, of course, I don't do it like this, but for demonstration for the video... Uh -oh. See, this is where I was talking about with this thickness of the product settling. Okay. A little bit more in this area. And the thing is this, you can actually leave it in. It's only you got the uh, slightly pat out the residual. So this is a leave-in shampoo, which is good for us naturals who, you know, we like to stretch our wash days to like two weeks. 
And if you feel like you got a cup, you got some build up on the scalp, but you don't want to quite, you know, get in the shower yet because y'all know how it is with the shower and stuff. Uh, got a little single strand knot action going on here. I'm trying my best to get all the other Harriets out and not, you know, pull on it. Hold on, y'all. Let me get my shears. Because you never want to pull on it. You got to cut it out. You got to cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Ooh, ooh. I know I'm giving the Tyler Perry real quick. Y'all know Tyler Perry plays way back in the day where they used to have the boom mic near the forehead. Okay, so here's my professional shears. Another thing is you never want to cut with regular scissors because it'll dull your ends and make it more prone to breakage. So, there we go. That's what I got my professional shears for. So, after I go in with my shampoo, I wish I could show you how thicker it can come out, but it looks like it don't want to. Dude, let me shake it up. Let's do this one more time and see if it comes out thick. Sometimes it comes out thick. Sometimes it doesn't. The day is looking like it's opting to come out on the liquidy side. And like I said, this can be left in. I'm solely focusing this on the scalp today and towards my edges, but on wash day, I drag this all throughout my hair. And the ingredients in here is quite lengthy. So in here you have distilled water, distilled oils of olive, coconut, apricot, um, pumpkin seed, coffee, hemp seed, a jojoba, wheat germ, uh, flat seed, glycerin, molasses. Yeah, molasses, honey. Honey, palm oil, palm kernel, palm tree leaves, coconut palm, shade tree bark, essential oils of tea tree, peppermint, lavender, confrey, extracts of ginger, um, ole, no, ole leaf, algae, rosemary, centric acids, vitamin A, B, and that's all that's in here. Now, after that, I go in with my oil. Shake it up. Make sure all the stuff is together. So, directions for this is to use four to five times per week. Massage it all in. And then the ingredients in this one is distilled oils of olive, jojoba, wheat germ, Weiss brand, apricot, coconut, flaxseed, sweet almond, Jamaican black, castro, yeah, I, I still got to look up that Castro, honey. Pumpkin seed, essential oils of tea tree, clara sage, coffee, comfort, rosemary, peppermint, lavender, asterisk of ole, leaf, chickpea, ginger, lentil, and vitamins A, D, and E. So, that's this. Oh, I should tell y'all this. It doesn't have the most pleasant <laughs> uh, smells. Like, how can I describe this? It has a very awkward, I, I hate to say this, but it smells, mm, it's, it has a very backdoorish like smell. It actually has a, I, I hate to describe it like this, but it has a toss salad in it. <laughs> like, it's not sugar honey iced tea. It, it's not a, a sugar honey iced tea smell, but it's like the 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 juices of the back door. That, that's what I get with this. It, it has a very taint smell. I know that's not what you want to hear, especially talking about this lingering in your hair. It is a very strong I definitely wouldn't recommend using this by itself. But the good and bad news is the smell of this overcompensates that tank smell of the shampoo. But see, this doesn't have a pleasant smell either. Now, it doesn't smell like booty, honey. 
but it, it has a rather strong herbally non-floral like smell within itself that does linger so you definitely want to use something like the allocate naturals um hair perfume spray which is not made with perfumes it's made with you know natural ingredients that's going to give a nice floral smell to the hair that does linger that can help mask this strong smell right here because it is indeed a strong smell that's why i typically use it at night time yeah very strong if you work anywhere close up on people like me, it's aesthetics, you're a cosmetologist, yeah, you want to use this at nighttime when you're not around your customers. Because like I said, it's a very strong herbal smell and it's not no floral. So yeah, if you're a massage therapist, cosmetologist, you're a doctor, a nurse, hell, if you work in fast food around your coworkers, yeah, this, this is... You, you might not want to use this during work hours. But a little bit of this goes a long way. Notice that I did not feel the dropper full. It's all the way down here because I don't even really need that much. I just put it right here like so. And then a little bit right here on my edges. Now they do got an edge one. Now, I'm not as worried about my edges, though. So, I didn't get the edge, um, the edge-based product that they have, which is, um, I think that's like $19 as well. So, I'm gently, lightly massaging it in, and then you will feel a tingling sensation. Especially if your hair is stoolly cleansed. If not, it's been some days it'll take a minute for it to get down in there. But you will feel like a, in the shower, you will feel a very cooling sensation to the scalp after you go in with your regular shampoo. I'm not feeling it right now because, of course, I got quite a bit of build up. I'm just demonstrating this to y'all. But when you use it on freshly cleansed hair, honey, you're going to feel that very cooling sensation. And then when you... Um, use this right behind it, honey. You gonna feel that tingling? So this is what I do. Make sure to coat this a little bit, and that is it. So, those are my two months results on that. Like I said, um, I've noticed some pretty decent results. Um, although, I'm just chopping it up as a loss for my stage of hair loss, though. Um, it might work better if you have traction alopecia or, you know, you got damage from weaves and wigs. Um, too much pulling on the braids, but genetics... It's not really doing the best for me, but for my existing hair, it's actually working pretty good wonders. So, I would definitely give it a B, no, an A minus. I go ahead and give it an A minus because it it I, it never claimed the cure during on male pattern baldness. So, it is what it is. The next journey for me is I'm going to possibly look into doing um PR. Well. We're going to see how PRP therapy works. And if that doesn't work, then we will go to the final option, which is to do hair transplant therapy. Because fortunately, with my hair loss, it is zoned into this area. And with it being zoned into that area, everything else right here is nice and full. I got enough hair in the back where they can cut some off and then put it right here because I'm not fully bald because I got this tough of hair and then I got some hair that's already still active in here so if they take a skin graft and put it up into this area that should be enough where uh, that hair can grow back and then from what I've researched you don't have to worry about balding later in life because the genetics is, is from the it's from the hair follicles and stuff that was 
naturally in this area. So since you move the hair naturally from this area, the only way that you will start to bald is if you are destined to be bald all over in your years to come. But if you're naturally designed to have full of hair still in the back, and you just and you put it up to here, that hair should still remain full. That's from what I've, you know, researched. So that'll be the last route I would go is to do that. Hopefully we don't have to come to that because that is a a, a six to seven thousand dollar cost. And then there's so many contraindications with that. You know, the fact that you know there's some scarring. Um, I think I would have to grow my hair out just to conceal that. <laughs> like, I wouldn't never be able to pull off the ball. Well, I, I wouldn't do the ball look no way. But that would definitely not be an option. But I don't even think a low cut would really be an option for too long. Because I want to say that it might scar. Then I got the factor in that I suffer from eczema all over. How is that? Am I going to be a candidate for that? I suffer from Crohn's disease. So... Weaken immune system or is they going to take me based off of that so yeah y'all so much to factor in in regards to hair transplant therapy um I never thought I'd be here <laughs> never thought I'd be here but in regards to the easy route, it ultimately does what it says it's going to do within reason. It's going to help. Uh, now, as far as the, uh, the, the cures for miracles and stuff, like I said, maybe if you have any other form of alopecia, but the male pattern baldness, don't expect too much, honey. But your existing hair is definitely going to help with the existing hair. It's going to definitely help, you know, moisturize the, the detoxify, cleanse. It's going to do all that good stuff. It's going to smell like crap. Like I said, that shampoo smells like tank. It smells like you know booty ins Yeah. What, what? What? To my doctors out there, what is the juices called from that from the anal area? Like that's what it gives me. It, it gives me a booty juice like like not fico matter but it gives me the natural juices that the anus produce. That, that's what that is giving me, honey. <laughs> like I said, not a repulsive smell, but not necessarily the most pleasant smell that you want to go around smelling like, honey. It smells like th that mixed in with the bar soap. Like when you cleanse the back door area, it, it has that type of smell. It has like, it, <laughs> like I said, not the most pleasing smell. Very, ooh. and then like I said, the um the serum gets even equally worse in a different way. It smells like a cocktail of just horrendous herbs, but I I rather smell like horrendous herbs than darn on booty, honey. But yeah, like I said, definitely need a shampoo. I mean, definitely need um either some hair perfume. What else would I think that will mask? that smell hair perfume go in again with some peppermint oil peppermint oil diluted with a carrier oil the, the strong smell of peppermint will help compensate for that, that that's about it because I can't think of nothing else that's powerful enough to, to man, or you know a very strong uh, citrus like grapefruit oil now mind you the grateful oil really going to have you tingling, so you got to be very cognizant of that. But yeah, something very powerful like grapefruit, eucalyptus, yanglang, uh, something like that will have to mask that. But other than that, aqua smell. So second thought, I'm going to give it a B minus just because that smell. So yeah, it is what it is. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will keep y'all up to date on this darn on hair restoration journey honey